All right, Congressman DePazio, I want to talk also about Iraq war funding because that went through the House today. And no, we haven't voted on it yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the papers have said that you guys are going to buckle on it, but it hasn't well, happened Well, I, you know, uh, I, I won't be voting for the war funding. Uh, I, they haven't even come up with the rule yet. I don't know what we're in recess, which is sort of like the parliamentary black hole right now while they try and figure out how to bring the bill up. But I expect, in all probability, you're going to see uh, – uh, on the uh, war funding go through with a majority of Republican votes. But I don't, you know, I don't know yet. I don't even know the conditions under which it's going to come up. Uh, Congressman DePazio, I know you're going to vote against it, and I know you're here trying to publicize the right things. But i got to ask you about the caucus. Uh, here you guys are uh, losing to the most unpopular president of all time. The Republicans are running for the hills. They got uh, slaughtered in 2006. They're going to get slaughtered even worse in 2008. How can they possibly be winning legislative battles? On an well, issue as important as Iraq. Well, remember, uh, we did manage uh, last year in May uh, to uh, put a timeline into the war funding. The president vetoed it, and that that requires a two-thirds vote to overcome, which would mean uh, you would have to get uh, some, you know, uh, 15 Republican senators and a whole bunch of House Republicans, and the Republicans hung tough. So uh, we lost uh, on the veto override, and unfortunately, from my perspective as a non-leader, I would keep sending it back and, you know, and just keep exposing uh, the issue to the American people. But uh, unfortunately, there's sort of sometimes an inside the beltway mentality. Well, we've got to get something done and we can't beat them at that. We've just got to, you know, we're just got to try and keep them from doing worse things like invading Iran. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, bill, the bills move. Yeah. Now, some skeptics would say uh, that the Democrats are perfectly happy to have the Republicans win on these. Because it's not the issues they care so much about as it is their own power. And that you guys will win more elections in 2008. And that's what the leadership is concerned about if the Republicans continue to hang themselves on this issue of Iraq. Uh, how do you answer those charges? Well, uh, the, the leadership and all of us should be concerned about the election. We went through 12 very grim years with the Republicans in charge. There wasn't a single hearing held. Uh, on the issue of Iraq or Halliburton or anything else during all those years. They marched lockstep with George Bush for six years. Uh, we've sent a heck of a lot of stuff to the Senate that's died over there because there aren't enough Democrats over there to, by the Senate rules, which requires basically 60 votes. Uh, and, you know, we have pushed on this issue, and I'm continuing to push on it, and there's quite a few of us who've said we're not voting for any more war funding that doesn't have a timeline uh, to get the U.S. out. Uh, and it's, you know, a large number... Of the Democrats there, I don't, there may be, I think there's a few Republicans of conscience taking that same position, but very few. I can probably count them on one hand. Uh, we're talking to Congressman Peter DeFazio from the 4th District of Oregon, and I'm being a little unfair here because I'm asking him to answer for people he disagrees with. <laughs> because, uh, well, that's, that's fine. And uh, he's, you know, he's uh, opposed to the Iraq war funding. But uh, I, you know, I keep coming back to this idea of the Democratic leadership and the Democratic caucus because, look, we were promised in 2006 that if uh, we won, and the de we meaning the Democrats won, and apparently that is not the same we, but if the Democrats won, uh, that there would be a difference. And so far, the hearings have been very good. Credit where credit is due. We just saw Gerald Nadler earlier on the program uh, talking to Colonel Wilkerson, uh, bringing up about, about detainee abuse. Henry Waxman uh, has done some great hearings, etc. Uh, so that has made a difference, and the difference between Democrats and Republicans is clear, and no one's confused on that. Having said that, on the major issues, there's been loss after loss. So I think it's a fair question to ask, in 2008, are we, if you get bigger wins, is there going to be any substantive difference, or are the Democratic, is the Democratic leadership going to continue to calculate that if they give in to the Republicans, no matter how small a minority they are, that they're going to continue to win politically, and that's the only thing they care about? No. Uh, i I, I got to disagree with you there. I mean... It's about getting to a, uh, you know, a workable majority and hopefully getting a Democratic president, Barack Obama. Uh, and there will be a whole different agenda in Washington, D.C. I mean, the president under our system has extraordinary power because he can, anything he vetoes requires a two-thirds vote to override. I mean, we're nowhere near two-thirds. Barack Obama would not be vetoing a bill that set timelines to get out of Iraq, which means all we would need would be a simple majority, except in the Senate, you gotta deal with that 60 vote issue. And that, you know, there's a possibility the Senate could change the rules. The Republicans threatened to do that, and it made the Democrats scared, and they reined in their filibusters. The Republicans have had more filibusters, but they don't really filibuster anymore. They, they say they're going to filibuster, the bills get pulled. Uh, in, uh, you know, in the first year of this Congress, then in any entire Congress in the history 
of the United States because the Democrats can't threaten them at all because they, they basically it's a 50-50 Senate with Lieberman. And, uh, you know, if the, if the Democrats get to 57 seats, even short of the 60, they can, they can say to the Republicans, look, you mess around like that, you keep blocking all our bills, we're going to change the rules, just like you said you were going to do to us when you had 57 votes. Is that real? Is that uh, being discussed uh, within the Democratic Party? Well, I would hope. I don't understand Senate culture. You know, I, it's, a, it's a different world over there. But I, I have friends over there who have that uh, position, you know, uh, Bernie Sanders, Sherrod Brown, and, and uh, you know, and other progressives who are over there. And I think it is real. I think, so, I think you know, so the, if we get a Democrat president, we've got a good majority in the House. We're working with the Democrat president, sending them bills. And, you know, there's, say, 41 or 42 Republicans who are blocking all the bills. I think you would find at that point that uh, there would be, uh, you know, that they may well push to change the rules and say, look, we're going to have a majority rule place here for change. Fifty-one votes wins all. So the Democratic senators are considering a nuclear option in that scenario? I, I believe they are, but I'm not privy to the highest councils over there. All right, Congressman DeFazio, uh, really interesting interview. We really thank you for coming on the Young Turks.